morning, people. <clears throat> Another God glorious, victorious morning here in paradise. Uh, today, I'm going to do a short spiel on these, our security agreement and to remind people that the security agreement is the lien. The registration of the lien or the, of, or no, or the security interest is done by way of registration under the Personal Property Security Act or UCC Article 8, so on and so forth. And uh, pardon me, 9 and uh, Article 9 <clears throat> and whatever jurisdiction you're in. Now, people, some other jurisdictions, one thing you want to look at to help you uh, locating stuff, uh, legislation, codes, whatever, is when every country has banking and banking register security interests. So if you're having trouble finding out under by what authority they're doing these things, then find out what the banks do. What 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 laws, rules, regulations are they relying on to secure your interest in property? And um, that'll help you out there a little bit. And uh, so anyway, I, I got to do a screenshot here of our security agreement. Now, some things are are blacked out or blocked out in this uh, security agreement for uh, privacy reasons. <laughs> this is a, a generic agreement. We also don't want people taking information half cocked and running off and start firing off letters. Here's the thing, you know, there's lots of people who have not been exposed to the reclaim your securities. They have no clue what it's about, none. <laughs> and <clears throat> absent that information, then a lot of things won't make sense. And they're, they're, so they're gonna use what, they, what they've heard, what they've learned, what they know from the previous years. And, uh, but mark my words, and everyone that gets into the reclaim has received a reclaim your securities package has said the same thing. Wow, now they understand why things work, why things didn't work, and that they were going down dead end roads, so on and so forth. And uh, so, truly, until you've been exposed to the reclaim your securities information, uh, y you don't have it. <laughs> you have no clue what we do here, and lots of people out there want to talk behind my back. That's okay. We've never met. And I used to say to people, uh, you know, yeah, yeah, how do you judge someone you've never met? <laughs> I guess a lot of people hate God too. So I guess I should feel special. And uh, so anyhow, yeah, let me pull up that uh, security agreement. Again, it's generic. There'll be some default uh, things in here. So it's titled security agreement. And this date here is a critical date. That would be the date of your 18th birthday. Here we have the debtor, John Paul Smith. This is from the birth registration birth certificate, which is a trust registration certificate number. And that's the debtor. And then we get into our proxy here, which is blah, blah, trust. And hereafter, secure party lien or. Now, this number here is purely a reference number. It is not a registration number. It's purely reference number. It's not an account number, anything, anything like that, purely for reference purposes. So here you have the debtor particulars. Here you have the secure party particulars. Now, this is not complete and total particulars, but this is uh, <laughs> what I'm putting here. And now the parties enter into the agreement and the uh, various blurbage. Now, the very unique thing about this uh, security agreement, well, actually, I'll get there in a second. So your, 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 your secure party here, your proxy is the secure party lien or. Remember, there's an assignment being made here, and that assignment will assign to Treasury, Minister of Finance, so on and so forth, so that that party becomes the lien holder. There's a reason for these things. You're not giving anything up here, but first you have to secure before you can assign, right? And uh, so the secure party is always a secure party. It's the one in control of the registration and the contract here. Now, <clears throat> this part here is very, very interesting, and I'm not going to leave it there for too long. Well, it doesn't matter. But here we got a situation where the debtor basically agrees to act in commerce as if the secure party, and this is why I say to people, you don't have to change anything. You don't have to go out there and get rid of all your identification, all those documents, so on and so forth, all those accounts. <clears throat> because by this agreement, the debtor is operating as if the secure party. So John Paul Smith is going out there in the instant that John Paul Smith purchases something or acquires property, bang, it's secured. <laughs> Very nice piece of work. We get into the collateral description area, blah, 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 blah. Okay. And by the way, you see, this is a three page document. We're dealing with securities and that's all that's what it all is. So we have to list spoons, knives, forks, and all the, you can, if you want to list all the items in your home, whatever, everything you've got, you don't have to, but you can, we don't, or I don't. And uh, as you see here, there's, it's, it's covering different ways. Um, so the amount of the lien, you know, terms of, I, I just blocked that out because you know, people put in there whatever they like. Again, 18th birthday. So this is all going back to your 18th birthday. This is the day you can go back to reclaim to when you turned 18, age majority. 
Now, here's a collateral description. This is where we get into the, the meat of the matter in the original registration certificate. This particular it goes in here. Okay. <clears throat> and then all security certificates, accounts, trusts, and deposits represented by associated with or derived from the original registration certificate or the global designation. There's a number that goes in here. Now, this is some of these things you could listen here if you so wish. Okay. And on your lien filing for automobiles, you put in the, the VIN number, for example. Now, this here pretty much covers everything else. You're keeping in mind, there's no substance in the system. So when they talk about personal property, we're talking about securities. We're talking about paper stuff here. We're talking about form. So our property tangible and intangible, real and personal property of every description, and deeds and instruments relating to or evidencing the title or right to property or giving a right or a right to recover or receive money or goods. That covers pretty well everything. There's a bit of a disclaimer here, indemnity situation in here. An advisory that this security agreement supersedes, voids all others, replaces all others. Again, reference number, purely reference number. This is not an account number. This is not a registration number. It has a particular purpose. And here's where John Paul Smith, the, no, this is where the man's coming in here. Pardon me. So basically certifying that he's the age of majority, blah, blah, blah. And he has first on knowledge of the facts. And so he's going to uh, do all of this and sign this in front of a notary. Use of the notary does not stipulate uh, to an election, an election to submit to the jurisdiction, you know, their system. <laughs> this is just to get it for so that the public can see it, public can digest it. And then here the little blurbage for the where the notary does his thing, uh, right here. So once this is all said and done, and there's no there's no two signatures here. There's only one signature here. This is what it is. It's laid out the way it is, and um, that's what we go by. So I'll just put a stop on that there. Now the security agreement is a critical aspect of setting the foundation. So that's where this video is going to, you'll find this video in the playlist on uh, setting the foundation. And this <clears throat> for reclaiming your securities, it's a very important part of the process for reclaiming the securities, for securing, for taking control, starting with, of course, the found registration of birth uh, security, the foundational security. Again, if you're going through your legislation codes, you'll see it. It's all it's all indicated in there, and um, investment property, so on so forth, so on so forth. We've talked in the previous videos what real property is, what personal property is, and again, it's not the tangible things. It's just the form only, and uh, so that gives you a very basic idea on the security agreement. And again, I don't want to sound like a broken record, but the security agreement itself is the lien. That is what creates the security interest, establishes the security interest. And then you're filing in the under personal property securities uh, act or UCC article nine, or again, whatever the legislation is known by in the country where you're at. Um, it's just registration of the existence. So, so when somebody registers something under say article nine or personal property security act, the registration there is not the lien. It's just notice that there is somebody has a security agreement somewhere and you better have one. If you don't have a security agreement, you've got nothing. <laughs> And the security agreement also establishes a trust. So there it is. There's no need for, uh, you know, your, 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 your deed, deed of trust and trust deeds and all that sort of delegation of authority, so on and so forth. That's all in the security agreement here between the parties. And, uh, you know, this, again, keep in mind here, the government requires that births be, births be registered. They're, they're, they're the instigator and they fully intend to create a trust. Of course, they never told us that part. And how did they intend to create a trust? Well, they got that they, they, they require births be registered. It's mandated, must do, shall register the birth. That's the language they use. Shall is imperative by their code. It's not an option. May is permissive, shall is must do. And that's by their interpretation act. And that's the rules they follow. So a birth shall be registered. And that's, so they're the ones making that command. And of course, people, moms and dads provide the registration of birth security and don't get anything in exchange. So trust, thing. <laughs> not rocket science. So the security agreement I've shown here is not exactly as uh, comes in our package, um, but it gives you a gist. And again, it's only three pages. So not, it's not complicated. Uh, the complicated part of this whole thing about reclaiming your securities truly is, is to acquire the understanding of the principles, the concepts, the fundamentals. 
And that does take time. And that, that, again, I've said before, that how long that takes for individuals. I have no idea. I don't know what you know. I don't know how much time you have to put into study where your head's at, many variables. Um, but like anything, it's, you know, people um, go to the Olympics. <laughs> they train upwards of five hours per day, every day, like it or not. They want to get, they want to reach the objective. They want to be at the top of the heap. It's the kind of things you got to do. So <clears throat> same thing with reclaiming your securities here. There's, you have to put in the effort, paramount and do your studies and research and think for yourself you know <clears throat> people like to talk to other people about things but sometimes that can throw you off kilter too because their concepts could be wrong i mean it all sounds fine and dandy and people pat each other in the back oh yeah yeah we're making progress here but <laughs> are you really and they're done that <clears throat> it's the beauty of being on this path for a long time as many other people have been so on that note uh, i'll leave it at that i'm not going to overindulge on in this uh, situation here this security agreement situation so i love you god bless talk to you soon I want to enjoy the day because I can. Thank you. God bless.